On today's PMEA's Take Note podcast, we are talking about one of America's greatest traditions and one that includes marching bands and lots of music on today's PMEA's Take Note podcast. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Estopakis, and welcome to this edition of PMEA's Take Note Podcast. So it's February, but we're talking about November. We're talking uh, about a fascinating thing today that I guarantee everyone who is watching this uh, is aware of, has seen, uh, and many of you probably uh, want to be a part of if you have not been a part of it. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. So I am uh, incredibly excited uh, to uh, have with us today uh, Wesley Watley, who is the creative producer of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Wesley, thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure. You know, as I told you when we were talking a little bit earlier, like I've been a fan of the parade since I was a little kid. Uh, I've been there several times. The band I worked with was in the parade, and your name has has certainly been associated with it uh, from from knowing some of the behind the scenes of it. Uh, so this is to me talking to a, a big celebrity. I'm so <laughs> glad you're here. <laughs> That's ridiculous, but it's <laughs> such, such a pleasure. Um, marching bands is my favorite topic. So you have um, gotten the right man for the right job today. This is going to be great fun. Awesome. So let's, you know, I want to talk about a lot of things about the parade, but let's start talking about the marching bands, right? Because we have a lot of music students and, and band directors uh, watching today. Um, like, what is that process like? You know, hey, I'm a band director and I want my band to be in the parade. How in the world does that happen? Yeah, sure. So let's start with being an applicant. Uh, we have an application process through getaccepted.com. It's actually happening right now. Um, we just had our deadline February 1st for the 2024 parade, believe it or not. So I think the first thing I would say is get started early. If you're thinking about being in the Macy's parade, uh, we try and select our bands a year and a half in advance. Um, and that's for one very specific reason. I think we all plan our programs. I think directors across the U.S. think in advance about when that big trip might come or fundraising for the next big trip. Um, and we want to make sure that there is plenty of time for a program to not only get in, but then raise the funds that it takes to get to New York and to do New York in the way that a director would want to do it. So it's not just about our parade, of course. It's about seeing their first Broadway show, going to Radio City and seeing the Rockettes. And for most programs, that takes time. So we do select uh, 18 months in advance. We've already had our cutoff for 2024. So if you're listening to this, Think about 2025. I know that seems like a far distance in the future, but it'll be here before we know it. Um, and applying that far in advance um, really allows every program to plan. So how does it start? Um, directors go to getaccepted.com, go to our Macy's Parade page, and it's all online. Uh, we ask that directors and directors apply, please. We wanna make sure uh, that the band director is on board with what that experience will be for their kids. Uh, but we ask that you go on and upload a field show video. Uh, we also ask a ton of questions to answer. Um, recommendations, of course, as well as, as with most application processes. But the most important asset is the video. Uh, we have a cross-functional team of judges at Macy's, folks with marching band experience. Um, one person's been on Broadway as a performer. Um, artists and art um, lovers of all kinds are on this panel. And we all go in first and we watch the field show. So my first piece of advice about applying is make sure that that video of the field show from last fall is a wonderful representation of the work um, that your band put into the show. Um, if it's a low quality video or if it's got a lot of background noise or maybe we can't quite see the drill, those are challenges for us. Like We really want to get a sense of that beautiful product that you put on the field with your students. Um, we judge them in preliminary um, competition first, individually as judges. I'm actually going through right now over the next two weeks and really watching each field show, uh, field show uh, video and going through a list of criteria. We judge each program. We then uh, rate all the programs together 
best to worst, of course, highest to lowest score. Um, and then we get together as a panel um, in several weeks, and we basically have a roundtable discussion about who we think deserves to be in the show. And it is quite the discussion. It is quite a heated uh, discussion because we're all so passionate about the opportunity. Um, and we want to make sure we pick the most dynamic, the most exciting, the most entertaining programs uh, imaginable. Yeah, so that was going to be my next question. You know, like what what are you looking for? Uh, and maybe that very last piece explains it. Like it's it's it is about can you show some entertainment, right? Yeah, and and I think entertainment can be defined in a number of ways, right? So when we think about the marching arts, um, I think the word entertainment really implies the audience. Are we connecting to the audience? And in what way are we entertaining the audience? That as a creative producer is my first question when I'm either booking an act or thinking about celebrity or thinking about a marching band, it's, does this band know how to connect to their audience? How is the audience responding to that band? That to me is like a key indicator that they are an entertaining band. But the definition of that based on style and age group, et cetera, can be vast and varied. And we encourage bands from all backgrounds, all disciplines to apply, um, but it's a very selective process, I think. Um, I, I get this question a lot, like, how do we get in, Wesley? How do we get our program in? And, you know, the, the old phrase, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. Um, if I were to answer that for the Macy's Parade, I would say apply, 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 because we can only accept those bands that apply. And it takes often many, many application processes, processes or times in order to get in. So um, let me break it down by the numbers to kind of put that in perspective. I think this might be helpful. Um, we have, the, at the most, we have room for 12 marching bands every uh, Thanksgiving morning, which is not that many slots for a parade. And we have the NYPD band is one of them. They, of course, represent the brave men and women who keep our parade route safe. And we have them every year. And we also have Macy's Great American Band. Um, that marching band has been in for over 15 years. And that's a slot for students who might be a fantastic student from a program that may or may not ever apply for the show. We want to make sure that students, star students from across the U.S. have an opportunity to experience our parade. And um, just a little plug for Macy's Great American Marching Band. We'd love to see students individually apply for that, um, that program. But that's two slots. And then if you think just on average, two, maybe three university slots might get filled that leaves about six or seven left. Let's throw in a cultural band. Uh, to give you an example, this year we had the Queer Big Apple Corps out of New York. We had a Mexican band join us from Veracruz. We've had um, bands from Central America, Costa Rica, Panama, those kinds of programs. From 12, suddenly we're looking at about six or seven high school slots. And mostly I get this question from high school band directors. And so think about that. You're representing your state. So you're competitive with other programs in your state. And then within that number, we're looking for programs who stand out. Now, what does that even mean, right? I mean, it could mean anything if you're a high school program. Um, and maybe this is a Pennsylvania kind of focused podcast. So I'll use two programs that have recently been in. Uh, Franklin Regional High School, um, Kevin Pollack was led that program for many years. And he's been in, I think, twice in my tenure. One of the things that's special about that program is that they are a show band in Pennsylvania focused on the audience. They do some of the most fun and funny and joyful programs that I've ever seen. And they really stand out in the region. It's, it's sort of its own unique creative point of view. Kevin did a great job over the years of really cultivating that sort of special point of view. And it all, they always stood out when they applied. Um, Westchester University is another program from Pennsylvania, and Westchester, of course, has a long, long tenure of success, um, but they're a university program that really excels at all levels. Um, of course, uh, visually, I think of that program as, as really making really bold visual statements. Todd, who does that visual design, is always extraordinary in his product, um, but they are a college-level university band doing what a lot of high school programs do, and they've got that university sound. So those two programs are just examples that they stand out amongst their peers. And that is, I think, um, one of the key components to getting an invitation to our brain. 
Yeah, and as somebody in Pennsylvania who has seen lots of marching band shows here, uh, th those are also two programs that I can say, I remember this show. Mm. I remember that show very specifically because of exactly what you're saying. That's uh, it. Very Memorable. creative. And, you know, you look at Franklin Region on a, on, on a high school level, a non-competitive band. Uh, but it, that that doesn't mean that that you're not a band that is, that is certainly capable of being in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And let me also thank you for that. That's a really good point. I think the word memorable is a good one. I say unique. I think memorable programs are important. Um, I was reflecting on this past year's lineup and programs like Vandegrift and Carmel and Tarpon Springs. I mean, these are some of the most competitive marching programs and symphonic programs that exist in our country. But I would encourage programs not to let that intimidate you from applying because yes, those programs are at the top of their league. And I only named those three. There are others that came and joined us last year, also some of the best in our country. But I was talking to one director and he, and his, he said, oh, I don't know, we're not at that level. And I just wanna encourage any program, show bands. Like I remember in my high school program, we competed three of the four years, but then one year we didn't compete at all. And it was all about putting on a great show for our hometown crowd. And I think that might have been my most enjoyable fall season um, because we really just did programming that was enjoyable and fun, not only for us, but for the crowd it's, as well. And we didn't compete. And I think that program would have done really well in hindsight with our committee as much as a competitive program. Again, taking it back to the audience. We're, our, uh, the Macy's Parade is really about entertainment across the board. We are always thinking of our wide audience, and it's one of the biggest in entertainment. Um, and so we want programming that appeals to all audience members, historically black colleges, cultural performances, Bands of America style performances, and show bands, you name it, we wanna represent as much of the marching arts as we can. So I, I wanna get into it in a second, talking a little bit more about the parade in general and kind of what your role is. But one thing I just thought of, you know, as we were talking about that is one of the, you know, I think your job is incredibly cool, like the stuff you get to do. But one of the things that on that list I think is, is extra special is you go and surprise bands and let them know uh, when they are accepted into the parade. What is that experience like? Uh, I joke a lot about how it is, number one, hands down, the best couple of weeks of my year. Um, it's a, the other joke is it's sort of part Oprah, part Publishers Clearinghouse, part <laughs> Santa Claus. Like we really do. We show up in these local markets and local cities and um, every marching band, if I'm really honest, every band is a representative of a community of support. It's not just the students on the field. It's the parents who support their kids. It's the administration of that school. And it's the entire community that rallies around these students, supporting them, cheering them on. An invitation to the Macy's Parade is very much a recognition of that community and that community of support. So it's a joy to get to fly and get to see these communities in person. Then of course, go to the high school and we surprise the students with the news. We invite all the local media there that morning. Um, and I have the great honor and joy, and you're right, it is joyful, uh, especially these days. I mean, some good news. Who doesn't love a little good news? But to stand up in front of students who have worked their tails off day in, day out, directors who've given decades of their lives to build these programs, to stand up and say, you've been selected to represent your school and this state and perform in New York City, and they go berserk before I even say the word Macy's because let's face it, New York City is a destination for most of these kids that is almost unimaginable. And then I say, in the so-and-so Macy's parade, and they go nuts and we throw confetti and share the good news, not only to the students, but in their local media that day. So they get all the attention they deserve. Um, as a former marching band kid and musician, student musician, um, I just can't think of any more worthwhile effort than to fly into these communities and shine a bright spotlight on the, these talented kids. It's it's a great honor. Yeah, and it's 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 at, to me it's absolutely amazing uh, that that experience you're talking about. I've been on more band trips than I can count to places all over, 
and that what you know the band that i was working with when we were there in 2006 i, I it's amazing like i can still remember so many specific details of mm. of that trip because it, just what you're saying it is in in so many instances it is that once in a lifetime opportunity yeah mm. new york is magical on its own but then you're there as part of this incredibly magical event um yeah, so we could talk about that piece of it forever. But what, sure. what I'm curious about next is, is, you know, looking back, so you've been doing this, what, 20 years? Yeah, this past Thanksgiving was my 20th break. Okay, so as you look back, what are some of the most memorable moments you've had in your producing role? Wow. That's tough, right? Well, I, oh, that's a good question. I would say first, if I think about the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, we've had a couple really significant years um, where we showed up, I think, for the country. The first, um, September 11th, we were the first major event in New York City to move forward after um, the September 11th attacks. And I think that year, everyone will remember that morning. Um, the mayor was here. And again, like everything had been canceled in New York up until that point. And we felt such pride, Macy's felt pride to bring that tradition, that sense of normalcy back to the country at a time when we were healing. Um, and I think it wouldn't be much of a stretch at all to then jump to 2020 and think about the 2020 parade. Um, from my tenure, I joined uh, the Macy's team just a couple of years after September 11th, but then 2020 came just a couple of years ago. And you know, we were right at, in, in lockdown at the height of the pandemic. Every major parade and event had canceled here in New York, but we were able to move forward. Now, we didn't do the live show as we always do, but we were able to preserve the broadcast. And I sit in the NBC truck and I promote and I um, plan the broadcast with our producing partners there. And I remember that year working sort of in isolation all from our homes and with the one question like, can we do it? Can we do this? Like, is it possible to preserve the tradition safely and deliver uh, this parade? And I think when we realized we couldn't do the live show, we, we asked ourselves, can we do the broadcast? And when we realized we could, we knew we should do it. And so we leaned in, we figured it out. We came up with a multiple day sort of pre-record scenario. We pieced it all together. And we, and we invited all those local parades um, that had been canceled to represent themselves in one unit in our show. And when I look back on that, not only am I personally proud of the broadcast, I think Al said it best. He said, you know, this may not be the parade we hoped for, but it's the parade we need. And I think that was my reflection on that year. It's like, it's not the perfect broadcast. It didn't have to be. It was the parade our country needed as part of a healing process. Uh, when all of our cultural um, traditions had been erased that year, we were able to forge ahead and do something safely and preserve a lot of other New York events that got canceled. Um, we felt very special, um, uh, in a very special position um, that year and we're super proud of that show. Um, those are two that come to mind. So let's go a little bit under the hood then, you know, mm -hmm. you, we talked a little bit about this band process, 18 months ahead sure. of time. So proving that this is, this is kind of a constant planning, right? Oh, yeah. So what is that like, you know, what, what is happening on your end as far as this constant planning, you know, what, what, what is that, what is that like, I guess, in your world is your day to day of planning for the next parade and then actually the one after that as well? Yeah, sure. So we're always thinking creatively about two parades at once. Um, so while we're looking and thinking about how do we want to kick off the parade this Thanksgiving, what is our opening number going to look like? And we're ordering confetti right now um, in January to make sure we have plenty. Um, our our other, uh, we have several teams at, at play. I want to really take a moment and say our parade studio is made up of a huge team of artists and designers who sculpt and build our floats. And we have a balloon team that builds all of these wonderful characters uh, that have become so iconic in our show. Um, we work year round because it takes a full calendar year to prepare for the show. Um, some of our final balloons and final float partners are getting finalized actually this week and next. And then we move into the creative and I start calling up those bands that were um, 
that were invited last spring who've been fundraising and we're going to get into the creative and start looking at it and we're going to start talking about the lineup and really it's this spring into summer that the final creative um, parts start to come in so i'll start booking celebrities starting in the summer um, and that process takes all the way through to october we start booking Broadway shows in the fall. And then of course we piece it all together um, in really like, I mean, it is a really busy season in October and November. A lot of folks think, I, I imagine they think, oh, I'm sure a couple weeks before Thanksgiving, the team just like pieces it all. That is definitely not the case. Thousands and thousands of costumes, beautiful floats, beautiful uh, floats. These things do not happen overnight. They all happen in-house at Macy's, and we have a full team year-round charged with making that beautiful dream come to reality. You know, one of the things I really enjoyed this year, I've seen a few times, but the mm -hmm. night before the parade, Macy's did a, the, the NBC did a special uh, mm -hmm. about and talked a lot about those things you're talking about to understand the Macy's Parade Studio and, and what that's like. Uh, bringing everything in, you know, to the city the night before. And, and you know, for marching bands who've not been a part of this, you know, it, when we were there, as part of our process was we came in at like two in the morning to do our <laughs> rehearsal in the star. Uh, right. And then went, we went and had breakfast at Planet Hollywood before we went and did the, the lineup, you know, right. uh, but yeah. that's part of that experience. All of these things that you don't see happening. Mm. And there's a whole, the parade, you know, takes a while. You know, we see it on the broadcast to get to Macy's. Uh, for right. all those people that are watching, which is uh, which is awesome. Yeah, listen, Parade Week is a blur for all of us who <laughs> work on it. Um, both Monday and Tuesday night, we shut down 34th Street, and uh, we have our what we call our street rehearsals, and that's everything from a celebrity rehearsal and sound check to the Rockettes kicking to Broadway shows staging, uh, Sesame Street, you name it. The stars come out those two nights. And they get a bit of a, um, a sound check, essentially, or a staging rehearsal. And then, as you mentioned, starting late, late, late Wednesday night, early Thanksgiving morning, marching bands are there in the middle of the night uh, between 2.30 a.m. and 5 a.m. Each band has its rehearsal on the star. Um, and our broadcast, I just want to say it, is important. I think our live show is important and our broadcast is important. So we have millions of New Yorkers who line the street, um, each and every Thanksgiving. And that it's our show is a live show first. We love bringing the energy to New York City. And New York is a character in our show as well. As I mentioned earlier, the, the setting, uh, when you see those balloons flying in front of like big skyscrapers, it's otherworldly and, and really a special, special experience. So we focus on the live show, uh, but we also really focus on that broadcast. And our marching bands come between 2.30 and 5 and get to rehearse in the middle of the night. It's something nobody ever sees or even knows it happens. And then as soon as um, the bands have finished, you're right, they go to, over, they go to a breakfast. I stay uh, in the truck within BC and we're going queue to queue for that broadcast between 5 and around 7 or 8. When the first Broadway shows come, they do their final rehearsal in costume. We then set for the opening of the broadcast. And then from nine till noon, it is nonstop entertainment. Um, and we are queuing things going, I mean, from act to act to act. It's, it's a really fast paced show. Um, and we do that intentionally because on Thanksgiving morning, we want to bring nothing but joy and entertainment and energy into the homes of Americans across the US. And we're super proud of the mix of entertainment that we're able to provide and the mix of marching bands. Uh, so I'm curious to learn a little more about that than, you know, the coordination with NBC, sure. uh, because I'm sure that's not just the morning of, obviously you've explained a little <laughs> bit of that, but, you know, and I remember in one of these specials years ago, if you can't tell, like I'm like a Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade groupie here, but yeah. one of these specials years ago followed Savannah Guthrie as, you know, they did that read through of the script and what mm. that process was like. So I'm curious, um, what what is that coordination with Mace, uh, with NBC and Macy's? You know, how does that all work throughout the year? Sure. NBC has been our broadcasting partner now for decades, and uh, they do a terrific job covering the show as it passes in front of Macy's Herald Square. And my team, it's really our job uh, to partner with producers and make sure that we not only look great on the street, as I was saying, but as we pass in front of the camera, that we're able to talk about each unit and really celebrate each unit in the way that 
like for instance, that marching band, whatever that blurb is before the marching band performs, we wanna make sure that we have the director's names pronounced just right and that we talk about a fun fact about the band and really show off the band's accomplishments. We do that in lockstep and we are working year round with our broadcast partners to make sure that it looks and sounds and is re everything is represented beautifully on camera. Um, again, it's really in my mind, it's two shows. We have our live show on the streets, which is, I, again, I can't say it enough. I know a lot of folks only see our broadcast. If you have a chance to do it in your life, come to New York City, see the show live. It is such a special experience. And I, and I imagine you got to experience that when you were here with your band. I would be curious to hear like, what was maybe something that was surprising that you didn't expect in the live show uh, that you didn't even know about? Well, you know, I will say is for, for a band that has, you know, we've done lots of parades over the years and you never know what you're going to expect. I was surprised at uh, how that parade uh, at points really kept moving. But then there were times where understandably because of the broadcast at Macy's, there's a pause and, you know, you don't know where the pause is going to be. Our pause, our longest pause. Okay. Now, this is when the route was a little different was literally in Times Square at the cross. So the band was in an S shape, essentially. Oh, right. And, this was back when we were on Broadway. Right. right. So, you know, yes. coming up Broadway. And, and, you know, okay, band directors get it. That's a challenge, right? So the drum line's in the middle, half the bands have, you know, but it's not like we're in a block anymore. We are in this right. S formation on the biggest stage of our life with, a huge amount of people there. And oh, by the way, it was pouring down rain. Uh, <laughs> you know, whatever. That's okay. It was still an awesome experience. There you go. But but I think that 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 that, that was one of these things that, that you know, surprised me as, well, number one, the, the real surprise was the amount of people there. I, I think we knew a lot of people, but but yeah. until you're there, you don't, you don't realize it. Um, I, and I will ahead. add, we control a lot of factors and we do our best to make sure you have the best experience you can. Can't control the weather. That is one factor we can't uh, impact. And I know that prayed well, 2006, pouring rain. I have never been wetter in my entire life, but it was memorable. It yes. was a memorable year and I will ne never forget it. Um, Times Square, I mean, we no longer go through down Broadway through Times Square um, because of some changes that the city has made. We no longer can fit, frankly, down Broadway. Um, but that's interesting. I mean, if you're going to get paused anywhere, why not get paused in the center of the world in Times Square? Absolutely. What a memory for your Absolutely. Students. Yeah. Cool. It, and, and to your question, you know, kind of what was the most memorable? I mean, the memorable, one of the memorable things was just how well that, that, everything was handled from a logistical perspective from mm. before we went there. I mean, you, your team, uh, the writing team that worked with us on the script. And then as we were there for that rehearsal with the NBC cameras and just that, that whole process was phenomenal. And I will say we lucked out a little bit in mm. that when we kind of got to, to Herald Square uh, that we were timed it really right with a commercial break. I've heard bands who say, boy, we get there and we have to go. We had Gloria Estefan was right before us. So she was performing. So there was this time that we could stand there and, okay, let's just calm down and go in and do this, this incredible performance, which they yeah, did. Soak it in, be present for that moment. I think there is a lot going on. As I mentioned earlier, the energy of our show is absolutely electric on Thanksgiving. And again, I wanna say, I think New York City on Thanksgiving morning, I know our show has a lot to do with it, but I also think there's just a generosity of spirit on Thanksgiving. New Yorkers are a little happier, a little kinder to each other. Even NYPD officers, they're there having a great day. There's a special energy, I think, to Thanksgiving morning in New York. And we bring so much energy to the street. Um, that I think oftentimes bands will reflect back and say, it happened so fast, like all of a sudden yeah. it was just over. And and that's because it does, it, it happens so quickly. And uh, what I tell my team every Thanksgiving is pause, make sure you look up, take a moment to look up, like look up into the skyscraper and see the family hanging out of the balcony mm -hmm. and waving down to the celebrities and just really the scale of our show. There is nothing like it on earth. It is really special. 
it happens just for those three hours and then it's gone for another year. Um, and that's what I think makes uh, the Macy's Parade so unique and so special to be part of. Yeah, and I will say that that NBC does such an incredible job of capturing that spirit of New York as you know, mm -hmm. starting the parade uptown with those shots, and and yeah. I think that's incredibly important. And then you know, Savannah and Hoda, how they they kind of capture that uh, as well uh, is is fascinating to me. And you know, I'll tell you, you know, it, I don't know how much pull you have, but if they're ever sick and you need a co-host to fill in, I can Ooh. I'll make it up there. I'll. I'm writing it down. I'll put okay, that in I appreciate that. Um, you you make this point of of three hours and it's done, right? And like I truly have this moment at noon of like this little bit of like, yeah, I'm excited because the holidays are here, but now I have to wait another year for the parade, you know? Because I truly love those three hours. What is that moment like at noon for you? Is it just relief, or is it is there some sadness? What what's that like? Well, first of all, thank you for being such a fan. I really appreciate like your enthusiasm. It's so genuine. And um, I think it's shared by a lot of our country, which is such a gift. Um, for me personally, because I'm in the tele television truck, they call it, uh, it's intense. It's a pressure cooker. Um, and we care about every detail. We want to make sure everything is flawless. So by the time we see Santa, I start to exhale, but not until the credits roll and we're <laughs> off the air. There's a huge, big applause in the truck. Everyone's so proud of the work. I walk out of the truck. I go immediately to the star where my team is in place. I run the staging team down there. We usually get a, a really quick group photo on the star. Um, and then a number of years ago, I bought an apartment on 34th Street. Um, it's my miracle on 34th Street <laughs> that I could ever buy in New York. Um, and I walk home. And I usually go straight to sleep uh, because we've been so deprived of sleep for the previous several days. Um, and then uh, my boys in, in Brooklyn, they, um, my friend Jeff usually hosts a Thanksgiving uh, for dinner. And so I usually take a nap and then I go to Thanksgiving dinner. That's my day. Um, but you're right. I think we're relieved more than anything. I think any time a parade comes down the route safely, we are relieved and overjoyed uh, that it was a safe day. And I think, um, yeah, I think relief is probably, if I'm really honest, we're relieved that it happened. We're never really done at noon. I say that we go off the air and that we're done. That's not true. We have a team that's still deflating balloons and taking floats um, back down to their um, sort of minimum so that we can get them back through the Lincoln Tunnel. Um, we're really not done until dark on Thanksgiving. So keep that in mind. If, you, if you're only watching from nine to noon, keep in mind the, the days ahead of time our team is working and then all the way through Thanksgiving. And then also I'll give a shout out to Kimberly on my team who runs the costume operation. She always says, we're doing laundry for days and days <laughs> and days. So it really is um, a, a labor of love for all of us. Um, and I think relief is probably a good emotion to describe it. Yeah, so this this will divulge if you haven't you've realized I'm a huge fan, but this will divulge a little bit more of that on parade day. I'm watching on TV, but on my laptop I have the Earth Cam up that wow. that shows what's happening at you know in the parade. And to your point, that moment at noon when it's over and this flurry of activity to undo because yeah, we're in the middle of New York City and you know that's pretty busy streets there. That all needs to be uh, undone. So the yeah. life gets back to what it was. That's right. I mean, we work with the city of New York and we partner with them in every way. And they make sure all the street lamps are swung so that our balloons can come down the street. And they make sure the pavement is perfect. And a lot of that stuff has to go back very, very quickly into working order so that our city can continue on its business. I mean, if I'm from Georgia originally, and uh, I grew up in a small, smaller town than New York, um, not very difficult, but it's a smaller town. Um, and just to see the city grind to a halt for those three hours and really for those 24 hours and then awaken again so that the Rockettes can kick at Radio City and Broadway reopens that night. And I mean, it really is uh, a marvel to see our show come up, shut everything down for just a couple of hours, and then New York City awakens again for the holiday season. It's a pretty remarkable feat. Well, Wesley, I, I think we could talk for hours about this. I sure know that I would enjoy it. Uh, but uh, I appreciate you taking some time to you know, give us some insight into what this is like. Uh, and it, we really, I certainly appreciate all of your work. 
Uh, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to be here. Great. Cheers. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, and Vans out there, uh, you know, start thinking for uh, 2025, uh, right. you know, to apply. So thank you all for joining us on this edition of PMEA's Take Note Podcast. Uh, we want to thank our sponsor, the Grove City College Department of Music. We'll see you next time.